Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Steel Flyer Show. We got the finest in the land for you here today. Oh, yeah, baby. Pearls of Wisdom. How you doing, buddy? Oh, fantastic, my friend. Yeah, man. And, yeah, man. And Professor Joe, how you doing? Doing really well, doing really well, especially because we're down at the shore right now. It's very, well, for now, it's nice out, so. I was just going to say, that looks like a bit of a different background you got going on there, man. Uh, you, you look a bit of a different location there, I think? Yeah. Yeah, all right. And uh, Pearl, I think you were saying it was, what, in the 50s this morning, up there? Yeah, it's starting oh. to be that way here. In the, here in the I mean, Canada. it's September. <laughs> yeah, Alberta, man. Canada, it starts to get cool early. <laughs> All right. We got a lot of stuff to get into today, folks. We're bringing you some great stuff here. It's the Flyers wrap-up show. Um, we, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about with the Flyers. Look, we, we know that they went down a- after the seventh game, and it was a tough loss for us. But all in all, it was a great, successful season. We were not expected to even make the playoffs. We made the number one seed. Okay. And we played very well in the round robin to get that number one seed. Uh, played Montreal. They played us very well. And then we played against the Islanders, who I think are that one step ahead of us. Okay. They are where we want to be next year, this year, for lack yeah. of a better term. Although, for me, I would say the team that compares to us more is Tampa because we have a lot of playmakers mixed into our team compared to the Islanders who have more playmakers but the more brute force playmakers where the flyers don't really have those people so it's more like you're similar to tampa and then you get someone like a Col- like the equivalency of a coleman a barkley goodrow a blah 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 stuff like that nature uh you might not even be- need that good of a guy that's physical like if bobby ryan gets bought out like i said physical can score yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. uh that's i don't think you need the jazziest guy. You just need someone that brings it. The, the Lightning don't have anybody that's considered a sexy name in that department. They just no. have people who know how to play that style of game and Goodrow, Coleman, and Cernock, and all those people. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, but I still think that there are some things that could have been I th- because I think that we're that one step behind. I, I'm not trying to compare us to the Islanders as far as like the players that we have on our team. I'm trying to compare like where the Islanders are right now. They're oh, okay. into the they're in the Eastern Conference final now against Tampa. Okay. And this is the second year of Trots. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay, so everybody's bought in. Everybody's playing his system. Okay. Right? And so we need to be that one year in against with A V. Right. We need that second year to come in to where we get everybody bought in. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm trying. I'm not comparing the guys on our team because you made a great point, Joe, about that. Because, yeah, I agree. We compare more to Tampa Bay than we do the Islanders as far as the makeup of our team because we have more speed and everything up the middle and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just trying to say we are where the Islanders are right now. We need to be where they are right now. Okay. obviously, because they're in the Eastern Conference final fighting for the cup and we are at home playing golf now. Well, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. there you go. That's a good one. So, (laughs) Perla, we were talking about this before we got on air and you had some great ideas and points about what you thought. How we could move forward. I mean, it was a great year. We had some great players. We had some awesome things happen this year. A nine-game win streak. You know what I mean? Give me your give me your assessment of the Flyers as far as how we played throughout the season, how we played through the round robin, and then through the playoffs. Well, through the season, uh, I saw a progressively better Philadelphia Flyers team that although on paper really isn't the fastest team in the world, skated well. Uh, and they still pressured. Um, I, I, I was always saying I'm a little concerned about the creativity. And I think in today's game, creativity is extremely important. Uh, you have to be able, We have to be able to throw teams off a little bit. We, I found that by the time it came playoff time, when – we had to play against the same team on a regular basis. They were able to anticipate what we were going to do 
a uh, little quick in the regular season. You don't have that option, right? You play, okay, you just played that team. Now you play in Philly, then you go on to this team and whatever the case may be. But now when we're getting into a situation where you're playing the same team for a five game series, seven game series. Also, we saw it with the round Robin again, you're not playing the same team. So th- there's a different preparation level. Great. So point. For, for me, I th- right now I see us as a great regular season team that would that I believe needs to focus on its creativity as in a player perspective, as a mindset perspective, um, from a coaching perspective. And you brought up a good point. This has only been AV's team for one season, right? So that may be part of the plan. It might have been first. Let's make an identity for ourselves. Right. And Philadelphia, you don't want to leave that, lose that identity first. Because um, right? that's the first thing he said at training camp was be an effing flyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's and make that's an identity exactly, that's exactly yeah. what this team became, was yeah. the flyers this year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, could you just hit it on the head perfectly? <laughs> yeah. I'd say so, that to Bryce Harper. So now, one, you, Joe? <laughs> I'm going to take a lucky guess here and say yeah. he's going to be doing that, and he's going to be working with Chuck Fletcher to say, "Okay, we need some create some creative players." Speaking here of creative team. players that play like a flyer, I saw somebody tweet this. I don't think you can pry him away, but would you give up a lot of our prospect pool? Not a lot, but a couple of our prospect pool for Matthew Kachuk. You, you won't get him, but yeah, I would give up a lot for Matthew. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. I might give up yeah. York and uh, watch his face for uh, Kuch- I'm blanking on it. You're I'm never going to get him. Zamula. Uh, huh? Zamula. Zamula. No, the um, Bobby Brink. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cam York, Bobby Brink, and uh, maybe Sanheim. And then Picks. Uh, no, I, I, I'll, I always look at it like this. If I'm Calgary and you bring it and you say that, I'd be like, okay, anything else you want to talk about? Because that's, I'm not doing that. You know, like, no, you don't have enough in your organization to get Kachuk from us. So don't even bother calling us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Rowe, that's how you really feel. <laughs> it's true. I just, yeah. you don't. I mean, no, I know not many teams do. And if they did, they wouldn't be too happy with giving it up. It's one of those trades where, You'd have to give up so much that it wouldn't be effective for you. It's just a trade that probably yeah. could never, yeah. See, could never happen. Uh, I'm on that. I'm on that same. I'm on that same theory too. I think you don't want to. That that's that's getting that's regressing. I think if we do something like that, you know what I mean. We're, yeah, but you we're, could we're, also argue the Lightning were regressing by the moves they made. They traded a first round pick for Barkley Goodrow. <laughs> so I mean, no, but what I mean as far as like what with the first round picking, no, I, I agree. No, I agree with what you're saying. But what, as far as regressing, I wouldn't want to go back to uh, the old philosophy, where hey, that one guy, let's bet the farm on the one guy. No, no, I don't think your farm is big enough to bet it. Anyways, you're not getting it. <laughs> simple okay. as that. Our our farm in Philadelphia is not big enough to get Kachuk, no matter what. There might be teams out there that could do it. But, but our, our, our are big if we are not, and we are one of the deepest teams out there, if we're not, then who is? New York Rangers, oh, probably. Rangers. Well, we're uh, one of the deepest Carolina teams that maybe. have good prospects that have potential. Some teams have prospects that everyone thinks are going to hit. We don't the have blue chippers. don't yeah. have many of those guys. Right. They have like Brink and York that everyone thinks is going to hit. Allison gets injured too much for everyone to make that claim. Um, okay. And then Ratcliffe is still ways of, well, maybe he'll be ready by next year, but I don't think so. Uh, he's still a little bit away. Roop's off if he keeps doing good overseas. Yeah. And Shusko, I like Ratcliffe's game. They would I really be like him. Guys up, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Because Ratcliffe, I like Ratcliffe. Like he's still a little bit. Away. Oh, I like Ratcliffe, but I don't know if he'll be up until he's like 25. Yeah. He seems like just, he's one of those we guys. Just don't have, we don't have blue chippers to be able to make that trade with. Uh, but I, a guy that have, you've brought up, and I've actually gone back and forth on this, and I just said we, we were just talking about creativity. Um, good, going by the fact that I think the change of environment and the excitement of being home, I would maybe consider Goudreau. If you want to get creative, Goudreau is all of that and a 
and more. Uh, mm -hmm. That's somebody that would I could see making sense. That would still take uh, a lot, though. How do you make that deal with your cap space and all our uh, with our that's, cap space and all that? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the same. That's kind of the same issue as trying to get Kachuk. What would we'd have to give up to get him? And he would have to do a uh, waive his no movement clause and blah blah blah. Well, I don't that. think Kachuk has it, but but Goudreau, yeah, Goudreau does. Yeah, okay. I think he would waive all right. All Maybe. right, so so you think you think the Flyers played really well, and then we just kind of got a little bit towards the end. There it was just yeah, towards the end we got predictable, especially Joe. against the Islanders. The Islanders. Yeah. Or if they can they matched you, us. You're, you're yeah. Yeah. They matched now, us. Giroux, or not Giroux, Goudreau, they're going to ask for, if they want a defenseman, they'll probably ask for your work, and then they're asked for an already defenseman, which would probably be Sanheim. Um, and then and they would probably camping? want a draft pick with that, obviously, because if, 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 well, be okay if we just traded Cam York and Sanheim for Johnny Goudreau, I actually would not mind. I love Cam well, York. I'd be okay with that, yeah, Sanheim. yeah. But if we just dead up gave him Cam York and Travis Shanahan, we have a lot of defensemen and we're planning on – it seems like we're planning on drafting. Drafting, like we yeah. Do. So I would be fine with that if you get it Me dead too. up. I, yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to do that. That would be kind of hard. You would have to convince them that Cam York's going to be like the next generational stud at what he does. And All then right. Shanahan is actually going to become that top two. Or top okay. three, at least, rather than a top four, where he's always your fourth defenseman. So, gotcha. So, listen, Joe. Let, tell me something, man. We got we got Perlow's view. What do you think? How, the Flyers, the season, the the round robin, the playoffs. Like we already know that there's going to need to be some things that are going to need to happen with the team, and we already know they're going to run up against cap space and all kinds of other stuff. But give me your assessment of what you thought, how you think the team fared throughout the season, and then uh, like the round robin and the playoffs. What do you think? Well, I think what Pirlo said uh, was very. Tr we, we played like our actual um, team, uh, like how the Flyers brand supposed to play, and all that type of stuff. Um, and I think what they did is they do need more creativity. We obviously need a scorer. I mean, the team needs a guy that, unless if Lindblom goes back to how he was, which I think he, he will, but that's still, you still want another scorer. You don't just want one mm, guy. That yeah. Scorer. Yeah. Um, mm. so I would say you still have to go out and get that, which is not by overpaying Tyler to Foley. Um, just throwing that out there. Uh, so <laughs> the, uh, yeah, good point. But, uh, the um, what you need to do is the, the ideal situation would be if you could somehow, which is I don't think will happen, but somehow free enough cash space to sign Mike Hoffman and he wants to come to Philly because obviously the other caveat is he has to want to come here. But if he wants to come here and he could somehow free about eight million dollars, probably uh, you would be able to get Hoffman. Well, either way, either way, if we get any big name, somebody, anybody. We're going to have to free that kind of money. Oh, yeah, but the difference is if we get a Goudreau or a Clayton Keller, they're not necessarily scorers in the sense of goals. They're more scorers in the sense of their points total. So that's a different type of scorer. That would be like adding another G, and we need somebody who is yeah, like, like, like a complement to G that could be that playmaker, yeah. that could be that one that's the spark plug, to be that one that, you know, like, well, the only thing I, the only one I can really, like Rafa Cry was a, in scores like Chris Cryer, yeah. would be a guy that. Could yeah, be, yeah. Like, Rafa was a good spark plug, but he's not a good scorer. Uh, what Hoffman, <laughs> what Hoffman is, is a high percentage shooter. Mark Recky somehow. Yeah. What Hoffman is is a high percentage shooter, and yeah. that's what we need. We need if we're having a bad game, we need a guy that can pot a couple on a bad game. You know what I mean? We have to unfortunately rely way too much on grinding it out, trying to get the bounces, which everybody says, but that's not the way your way a team generally is going to win a cup. You need to have one or two guys that can score like two goals on 17 shots. You know what I mean? Like just pop one out yeah, of the blue like that. Say, Those are very important. And we don't really Lim, – Limblom is both. He's like that. And yeah, Brink, like Brink comes up. Brink is, a, but that's a little ways away. He's a, 
shoot more of a shoot. He can play make, don't get me wrong, but he's more yeah. of a guy that wants to shoot the puck. Um, I like Farabee's game as far as when we talk about that too, because he seems like that kind of a player too. Yeah, he seems to. Like yeah, exactly, and Pitlick, because I agree with what Perla said, because Pitlick definitely needs to be one of the guys of all the guys that we brought in. He's got to be one of the guys that stays. I think for sure. Mm-hmm. I really but like I his game. Say, a lot of people probably won't like this because he's on the final year of I think a five million dollar contract, if I'm not mistaken. But because of his mindset, I don't care if he only plays 50 games. Because of his mindset, you probably wouldn't be the worst decision because he shoot first to try Jeff Carter as your third line center. See, I've been hearing that name a lot too. I've been hearing that around a lot too for him coming back here to be that, even if he does play only 50 games because he's got such a shot. His wrist shot is one of the sickest wrist shots I've seen in a really long time. And you can't and, skate worth the poop anymore, but yeah. I, I know. So, yeah, but, but I don't, I don't, take over I don't Grant think any day, any day, any day. I think the main reason you would bring him in is not even for where his skills at now because he's going to be playing on the third line and his defensive numbers because of his uh, slowing down his play have gone up because he's worked more on this end of the ice because the other end of the ice is depleting. He's going away, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I think uh, he's going to be a good player. And uh, he has uh, 17 goals in 60 games. He had 17 and 10, so that's still – so, and he was on the Kings, which was not a great team. So he also had seven game winning goals this year, which I did not realize. So he's still Mr. Clutch. He did a lot of that with he did a lot of that with Philadelphia too. Yeah. So yeah. he's still yeah. the clutch factor. So yeah, like yeah. He's a guy that can always score you a big goal. And this is actually his best season in two years. Because he had thirteen goals, thirteen goals, and then he had seventeen. So yeah. And then cool. a few years ago, he still had thirty two. In twenty sixteen, seventeen he's still can- he's not gonna get to that total, but I mean I'm just thinking. right. I want to just say this. I thought the Flyers, I was blown away by how they played this year. I was not expecting, I was expecting us to be this kind of middle of the road team that just made it to 500. That was going to be a little bit better than 500. And we were going to be like, all right, we're fighting for next year. Hey, you know, I was not expecting us to make the playoffs. I was not expecting a nine game win streak. I was not expecting the Carter Hart explosion and and all the things that happened this year. I was very, very disappointed in the playoffs. I thought we were outmatched and outplayed against Montreal. Uh, I felt that we got lucky. We did not win that series. We got lucky in that series. That's my opinion, my two cents. And then it came against the Islanders, and they had so much more time to sit back and do exactly what Perlo said. Watch our tape. And they did exactly what Montreal did. Okay? They got guys in front of the net to get in front of Carter Hart. They took point-blank shots. Okay? They beat us to the puck every way. They beat us to where we were going to be going. We couldn't dink this stuff off the boards. We couldn't. We were looking for the two cute plays, blah, 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 blah. I felt that we, although we're not picked to go to the playoffs, I'm grateful that we did make the playoffs. I just don't think we played our best hockey. No, because it's what Pirlo said. It catches up to you when you're not the most change-it-up team. Uh, You're kind of a let's-keep-doing-this-type of system in the first year with a new coach. It worked out great, but then the next step is learning when to finagle everything a bit to confuse the other team. Kind of like I was telling Pirlo when I put the – um, basketball pick in how Brad Stevens always does with the Celtics. He'll just say, oh, we lost? Okay, we're going to play a completely different style this game and confuse the living crap out of you. And then as soon as you figure out that's how we're going to go back to our old style, so you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and then you lose. by. And so, like, that's um that's similar when you get different players like a good row, uh, not those guys, but similar players who are good row. Like Getting like those creative Coleman, players. A uh, Chris Kreider, yeah. who's everyone's yeah. heart and yeah. he's been the heart and soul of the Rangers team, even though there's better players there. He's been the heart yeah. and soul of that. I, I so, like Chris Kreider's game. Uh, you, uh, you have to get guys like that. that don't, that's why I think the talk of the immaturity off the ice thing for Matt do- Matt Domi. Max Domi <laughs> It's uh, a little extreme because if you are in a good situation, you're gonna your head's gonna get straight. 
That's the way world works. That's the way life works. <laughs> so if you're in a good, happy situation, you ain't going to yeah. complain about that outside stuff. Yeah. So yeah. If, if he comes in and he fits in well here, which probably would work because talk about being a flyer. I mean, the dude hits, the dude cross checks. He, if you get him he in the fights, league, he, he fights. Does, he scored like people don't people actually didn't score 70 points a season before. Like, it's not like the dude has had two straight terrible seasons. Like, the the dude scored 70 points a season. Right. I was like, oh, no, Max Domi sucks and he doesn't have a good match. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. 70 points. You we'll take that. That's pretty good production. If you yeah. think that's not, that's not, that is not we'll how that, that works, actually. Um, yeah. And you don't score 52 <laughs> in your rookie season. You also don't score 52 in your rookie season if you're terrible. So, um, yeah. with so, the right coaching, sure. which we have, the right – team to put him in the right mindset which we have i believe he would actually take off here because i said that on twitter when we were going to that thing uh i think he would actually go from here to maybe even being at 65 to 70 per season here so if you get him six you're getting a player that should be paid eight yeah like that's what i'm saying like if you bring him in him five million four and a half, six, or get them on like a Braden point contract, you're going to yeah. get somebody that should be paid significantly more than their output. I agree. I agree. Sure. So you guys all think that no matter what, we have relatively a good base team. I, none of you guys talked about bringing in a guy more physical. To, well, don't. Well, okay, yeah, true. Um, but I, I would like small, to see some. He's a smaller physical player. He's a smaller I agree. physical player. I want to see I, – I don't want to see a team full of jeru size guys. I want to see a team full of chara size guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. You know, when you get guys that big and tall and, and heavy, uh, they they tend it's to be simple. a little bit – yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of where I'd, I'd like to see the team go. At least one or two guys. Look, we don't need to be the Broad Street Bullies anymore. We don't need to be that team anymore. We've got – We've got finesse players and we've got playmakers. We need that creative spark, just like Perlo said. I agree with you 100%. Joe, you said the same thing. We need that creative spark. We need that one or two players. Like I'll give you an example. Lindros was that perfect player. He was creative, but he also did all the great stuff. He would hit you in the corner. He would be able to take the slap shot. He would fight you. He didn't care, and he was good at it. Okay, and he was that. Oh, we need you to play like this. Oh no, now we need you to play like this, and he was able to do that. Okay? I still say he's the second best power forward of all time. So, but I mean, yeah, we're we're gonna go we're never gonna get point. another Lindros. I get it. Okay, yeah. but can we get somebody? Sort no, yeah, that's not. Like yeah, that? I was They're gonna say to for a yeah. veteran, if you want to get a veteran again, he might only play fifty games. But if you want to get a veteran that. Knows how to be a third line center. Wins face offs is six three, about two thirteen. Uh, is Koi? He plays fifty games, and we he, we we give him what two three million a year? Yeah, okay. You get, yeah, I don't. You might be able to convince Koivu to take at like. What? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we even get paid three. Well, I'd play for that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. And I can't even skate. So, <laughs> and then Simmons, of course, I already mentioned him. Uh, Greg Smith is six one, but he definitely plays a. Physical style, more of a smaller game. Yeah. Um, so you took those. I I have always really liked Craig Smith too. So if we do get him, he can play center in the wing, fits with the Flyers versatility. I would actually really like that move. Uh, yeah. if, if that, assuming that so needed. Yeah. So you guys think we st- we all pretty much have said it. We oh, all think <laughs> steal yeah. Matt Moore the Islanders if you want that. Could yeah, there you go. go. <laughs> but we all have said it. We've all said that we want to. Well, there's some players that we need to add to the team. OK, that's basically what this is all boiling down to. It yeah, doesn't matter. Pieces of yeah, it doesn't matter who we bring. We need some other cogs to, to put into the tools here so that we can make this machine go. OK, look, we all agree that the Flyers had a great year. OK, and we made it to the playoffs as the number one seed to the round robin. We weren't expected to do that. And we played really OK in the round robin. But we, we also see that we became predictable. We were not able to be creative. And uh, we have some holes to fill. I agree, though. I think that this was a good thing for the Flyers. A first year under AV, and we make it to the playoffs. We make it to one step from making it to the conference finals. 
Okay, isn't that where Barry Trotz took the Islanders the, the year before? They were one step away, game seven, and they lost that game seven, right? Yeah. I mean, I know we don't compare player to player, but I'm talking about scenario. Actually, I think we do compare player to player to the Islanders, actually. It's system that is the problem. Yeah. I, do, I think player for player, we are a better team than the Islanders on paper, especially on defense. I and agree. Goals. I, so, I agree. I, yeah. And I think we're a better team. Oh, than I was just saying all. style when I said we don't compare to the yeah. Islanders. The Islanders yeah, have yeah, more yeah. brute force, clear the puck, go through you. The Flyers have clear the puck, let me try to go around you. So it's a little bit different of a – but we don't have the players yeah, like said, per se. Crazy. Yeah, we don't necessarily have those players to to necessarily carry that off either. We mm. tried to get players no, to do that. You don't have You don't have a Josh Bailey who's but not. That's what I mean. Does go through? Yeah. We tried to get players like that at the trade deadline, and we thought we were getting those, but that didn't work out in the playoffs. It yeah, worked out on the regular season. Here's where you but, bring the big point. We have disappointments that I don't know what to do with. JVR. Is a very big example. It's like the elephant in the room. Uh, I just did a video on getting Max Domi. Ghost is a huge hole where you're like, ah, if Ghost turned out to be what he's supposed to be, these creativity issues all of a sudden don't seem like such a difficult thing anymore. One thing about the Philadelphia Flyers is they don't really have the most creative defensemen. Uh, wow. that, like, well, it's it, the most it, creative so, defensemen. So that, that would be an example. Yeah. The most creative That's defenseman a- is Myers, I would say, honestly, over Proby. That's why people think he should be on the power play more, because Myers does the yeah. slide. Like, yeah. he almost does the miniature version of Klinberg, where, like, if he <laughs> takes the puck yeah. here, or do, like, the slide, slide. and then shoot it, which I'm sure he stole that from John Klinberg, which was a great idea by him if he did. Uh, yeah. So, um yeah, that uh, that's uh, something where Provy's the more creative end to end, like Carlson, if he wants to be, where like he just does that. But in the power play zone, sometimes Provorov is not creative enough, and Myers is the guy that does all that craziness. Also, you will Ghost see is that Zemul. guy too. Yeah, Ghost is that guy. Zamul is also supposed a guy that's supposed to uh, do all that, cra- which he has proven to do so everywhere else that's not in the NHL. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. to do all that creativeness where he always finds like you could probably have like Zamula made some passes for Russia where there was like two people on the guy. And it's like how did that get to that guy? <laughs> and, then, and then the guy taps in a saucer pass and you're like <laughs> Hey wait a minute. How okay, that happen? that was beautiful. Uh um, yeah. so like that would also fix our creativity problems on the back end. You still need to get more creativity like we were saying though on, on the, the front full- end. And still, yeah, yeah. like yeah. guys that yeah. just know when to shoot and when to pass rather than trying to get some cute uh, down the ice. But one last question, one last question. If because this has been all the buzz, and we even talked about this before we came on air. If G was stripped of his captaincy by management, would that signal that he's on the move? Or would you rather it be voted on by somebody else? You got it first. You giving it you to know me? What I mean? Yeah, yeah, Perlo. Yeah, go. What I just think, think that Ed Schneider has shown so much. He's so loyal, uh, and the whole organization in that area. I don't know. I, I think he probably would get traded before they'd remove his captaincy. Uh, I don't even know if he can do that either. It would, such a, it would create such an awkwardness in the room. Uh, it's hard for me to say. Granted, yeah, we traded Richard, so it wouldn't be like the first time we did it. Everyone was like, whoa. And that was what? when Ed Snyder was <laughs> alive. Yeah, so like, yeah. yeah. First time we did something where yeah, I when I more. say Ed Schneider, I'm not talking about him being there, but the whole idea behind Ed Schneider and well, how that organization because has grown and the loyalty that's still there because of Ed Schneider. It's still there. It's still yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe because, even more so than ever, you know? Yeah. 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 I agree. But there's Joe, what do you think, man? What do you think? Uh, I don't think they're to take it from them unless if well, first of all, unless the players think they should, uh, which I don't think they do. And then uh, two, if he gets traded, there's 
about two to three teams that could happen t- with. So you don't have a lot of – because there's no chance he's okay in Detroit. There's no chance he's okay in Ottawa. And the, a slim but little chance he okays L.A. Uh, so – I think because LA has a very good prospect pool, so you might say I think the team is going to be a quick riser, but that's the only way it would okay that. The only team you might okay is Montreal uh, if they want to get G because uh, it's his area. He'll be going back back where he was at, and he'll be playing with a team he knows uh, from them almost beating us uh, is a team that's gaining momentum. So other than that, I can't see him. What? No, I still don't think he would okay that. Yeah, I can't see. I was going to say maybe the. But we're not going to trade within division because I was going to say if the Devils were like, hey, what would it take to get Claude Giroux unless you're giving us one of your best freaking prospects? I ain't trading him to you. So, <laughs> like, you ain't so, gonna, like, you better be giving us, like, one of yeah. your, like, guys you have less confidence in now that we know you should still have confidence in, which seems like the case for the Devils with some guys. So, other than that, I am not trading the Devils on Giroux. So, you don't think Giroux is going to go at all? You think he's going to stay? I don't think so because of the optics of it. Yeah. There's not like anywhere other than a couple of teams you could go to, and he has to. And you also have no control over Claude Giroux. The only way you have control over Claude Giroux is if you go, you're cut. And there's no way the team's going to cut Claude Giroux. Right. Right. So that's why okay. I don't think he'll get moved because I don't think he'll yeah. okay. I, I would like to see him step up a little bit more. Um, I think it's that time of in his career where he needs to be more of the vocal leader instead of more of the do it by example, because doing it by example is good. But when you're not able to do it by example anymore, then you got to be the vocal leader. And he has shown that, unfortunately, he has not been able to do it by example. This playoffs, this, you know what I mean? So. I still have confidence in him. I still think that he has been the thing that's righted the flyer ship since he's been here. Um, but it seems like AV's confidence has waned from Giroux because he did not get a lot of playing time in the last four games. Okay? And he wasn't playing very important minutes either. And and yeah. that's something that we talked about like when we did our show, like our preview show before we even got into the Islanders. We even talked about that a little bit too. Where it's like, wait a minute, G's down to 13 minutes a game? What? He's our captain. Yeah. He's our playmaker. He's the guy. What? So, Granted, we are talking about a team that had Jason Smith as their captain. So, I mean. um, <laughs> Okay, but when, when you put a guy like G up there as the captain, I'm sorry. I'm ex- yeah. I have more expectations. I think it's, I think my dad honestly hit it on the head with G. He's getting old. Can't expect yeah. him to do much anymore. He's getting he he's had some injuries that affect his legs, yeah. and he's had injuries that affect his wrists more than once. Um, so uh, I think all that just adds up over time from the game he played, especially being one of the best faceoff guys in hockey. You get like slashed and hit all the time, and I mean like that's really going to mess up your hands over time. Because even when he's not playing center, he still takes usually the most or second most faceoffs per game. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, that's what I, I think is just catching up to him. That's why if you do strip the captaincy, I think it would go to Provy because they know he's going to be there for the long haul. If it goes to Jake, you don't know how much longer Jake's going to be there. So that would be kind of an odd scenario because if Jake gets traded after one year, then yeah, it's kinda... probably going to go to Provorov anyway. So without it's a like, doubt, goes oh. to Provorov, no doubt about it. You yeah, think? I was, I was like, but why? You think so? Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. No you doubt don't think it. it would go to Couturier? That's the uh, other no, option potential. No, I don't. I, and I love Couturier, but I think Provorov exemplifies. Uh, first of all, he's he's a little younger. He just he exemplifies the first guy to the room mentality and all of those sort of things like that. Um, Couturier is great, but you don't need to put a C on Couturier. You know what I mean? For Provorov, it's almost like a um, like the C's already on Couturier almost. A lot of times when you're taking this, uh, choosing who you're picking for the C, it's the guy that is the exterior captain that is going to get the boost from having the C rather than the guy that – Katuri is already the captain of this team. Let's just put it out there, okay? Katuri is the captain. 
Provorov would get a huge boost of confidence to say, here's the C on your chest. And I think it would expand his game even more than ever before. That's not going to happen to Couturier. Most coaches, they choose the captain for what's going to be better for the whole team and the player in general, okay. not necessarily who the captain is of the team. Right. I, I see what you're I, saying. I, I see what you're saying, but I'm, I'm going to disagree with you slightly on that because okay. I, think, I think what you do is you give Couturier the C and then you make Prover off the A and you make Isn't Jake Prover the A. Already an A. No. I thought he was one of our undressed A's because the Flyers have a lot of assistant captains that don't wear the A. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he might so, be. Yeah. In, in, yeah, because he might be switching it off with Hayes. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. he might be one of our other guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hayes is so, a good example. And that's, you know what? There's something we got to say here. There's a lot of captains on this team. Yeah. Yeah, because Hayes could be a captain. And he's the vocal guy. He's the emotional guy. He's the fun yeah. guy. He yeah. should be the guy that's being part of the creative team. And yeah. he yeah. just seemed like he was out there by Except, himself. Yeah, the only thing is I don't think the Flyers will ever put anyone as their captain that just came into the organization. Because I think otherwise Voracek would have been the captain over Giroux. Because Voracek's a more vocal leader, as Pirlo was saying. Seems more like right. a captain. Uh, yeah, no, no, player. I agree. Uh, so... Uh, but that's but, why I would pick uh, Coots. Yeah, where well, Provis was ingrained and grown in the organization too. Uh, I don't know. I, I agree with Pirlo. I think it should be Provorov because he has a key to the gym. If you have a key to the gym, well, at least we think he does. It seems like he does because he's there before the staff gets there half the time. So yeah. how the hell does he get in? Um, so uh, <laughs> if you're, if yeah, that's you're, a good example. Unless he breaks through the windows. Uh, so if you're um someone that's always like that, it's like giving. Kofax, the captain of the do- like, it's yeah, somebody that always going to show up, run up and down the steps seven hundred times, uh, and never seem tired. Like Provorov's one of those guys you can play seventeen overtimes probably. And Provorov's still- work yeah. ethic is unparalleled. Yeah. When you're trying to bring young kids up, and you want to have a figurehead for what, maybe you'll never be this, but pay attention to this. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take yeah. a guy this that's is a little bit lazy and make him a good worker and a good worker into a great worker and a great worker into Provorov level. That is enormous for a Great point. Great point. Yeah. No, I just, I just was curious to see what you guys thought about that. Um, I'll tell you what, we covered a lot of great stuff today yep. and, and we went through um, some amazing things. You guys really need to like, and subscribe this. You need to follow these guys because these guys right here are the professionals. Okay, and I can't even stress it enough. Professor Joe holding class and pearls of wisdom. These guys are where it's at. Okay, so Professor Joe, tell us how we can follow you. Tell us where we can find you. Uh, Sports Fanatic News with a P is our YouTube channel. Um, True Philadelphians, which is sports cats, which is true underscore Philly sport on Twitter. And then at JJ Bora 26 is my own and then i guess i'll uh i think it's six seven eight nine is my bork six seven eight nine is my instagram so if anyone's on instagram there you go well, this is getting longer ain't it <laughs> yeah man perlo tell us how we can get a hold of you well you should be watching this on my nhl pearls of wisdom which we have we have a we have our, our patreon which we put on a, a link in the comment section uh, people are making some killer money out there. We're uh, we're doing ball picks. I hit tennis this year, this year. I've been I just hit my first wrong pick. I was on ten for eleven in U.S. Open tennis today. Oh. That's, so, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, we're doing fantastic. Also, come see me in lives in the evening. We do. I'm doing tennis lives, hockey lives. We're having a blast in that. But most importantly, you can find all the fine programming at steelflyers.com www.steelflyers.com and uh, keep an eye on that i want you looking on that every day because i'm telling you it's going to morph into something so beautiful it's going to make you just want to cry 
It's gonna. Yeah, no. It's an amazing. Got, it's, yeah. There's an amazing site coming up on there. It, it, I'm so Stay excited tuned. for it. Yeah, man. I have to tuned. be part of it. If I was going to be a person that was involved in sports and loves sports, I would be like, this is what I always wanted. It is and an, going to be an incredible site. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait till it comes out. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Coming up soon. Uh, you can find me, Steel Flyers. Uh, at www.steelflyers.com. And as the great Pearls of Wisdom said, uh, be looking for some great things coming up here real soon. Uh, be looking for a merger of some talents. Uh, be looking for potentially uh, all kinds of great shows for you guys to check out and a combination of a whole bunch of other people. And we're trying to put together kind of a, a network. So stay tuned for that. You can find me on Twitter at steelflyers 52 Thanks, guys. It's been great having you. We love having all your great knowledge and all your great pearls of wisdom. Thanks for being here. Thanks for following us. Hit the like, subscribe, ring that bell. Let us know what you think in the comments. Remember, stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough.